Hi everyone, it's Dan here and in this tutorial we're going to be sculpting the eyes. I've gone ahead and set up my scene over here so we do not take too much time. So you just head into sculpt mode on a, or any workspace that you want to work in and you could just begin. Now before we start with working on the eye, uh, I've already added the cube and um, a sphere. If I hit tab and go to edit mode, you can see that I've added uh, three loop cuts horizontally and vertically. It's just so I could modify the mesh as you will see later. Now the first thing before we begin sculpting the eye, we should know um, that the eye does not sit on a flat surface. So I'm just going to pretend that this is a face and I'm going to move this back, you know. Before I uh, uh, work on the upper and the lower eyelid, I'm going to create a curved surface so it's not just flat, it's not just um, uniform. So I'm going to pull this part out. It will be where the upper eyelid will sit, you know, and they have the, the brow and all that. Again, I'm going to push this back in just a little bit. And then by the side also. So I have my quad view over here on the left. In addition to my uh, rotating around, I could just look and you know see how the model is doing on uh, other views. Okay, I won't do too much because we're not working on a face. So I'm going to try to keep this as short as I can. We're not working on a face, so we we. we we don't want to spend too much time. Okay. Okay, and now I'm going to hit Control D. So I'm just going to continue working on the area around the the eye. I have my references on my second screen, so. Find that this caves into the face and then getting to the upper eye, it sort of pushes out. So I'm just, oh, I think I didn't apply my scale. Yeah. I'll go back to object mode, control A, apply the scale. Okay. And turn on dynamic topology again. Okay. So, according to reference, the mesh or the skin sort of um, uh, caves in uh, towards the nose area and then we have this around the upper eyelid and from there you know just above that you have the brow ridge so just going to set that up before I begin adding the, uh, the brows and the or the upper eyelid actually and then at the lower uh, part of the eye it sort of caves in as well uh, use the clay brush and just slightly flatten the sides as well fix this later but I just want to block in the parts that make up you know the the eye and then we could move on from there okay uh, I think I'll leave it here just use the grab brush and move it around a bit now the thing I like to do is you know you don't have to do it but uh, you know there are, there, there are different ways we do these things so i like to use a round cube um go to operator presets and set this to quad and then reduce the subdivisions if you like or you could just leave it like that and then i scale it down I scale it down and just use that to form the upper eyelid um since i do a lot of stylized characters it gives me 
um, a lot of flexibility before I, you know, uh, join it and continue sculpting from there. But I get to really shape uh, the eyelids and leave it as a separate mesh for as long as I like. And then when I like the shape, I could then join it to the rest of the mesh. I'm going to go back to object mode, hit Ctrl A and apply this scale. And then I'm just going to remesh this. Something like that. So it will have some uh, a bit more geometry. So the second part is the upper eyelid. And you could just follow the uh, the shape of the uh, the surrounding uh, mesh or skin around the eye and then add that in and following the shape of this sphere as well so it it helps to add the sphere though of course you could sculpt without it at first and add it later however you want but this is just how i like to do it and as i do it i also look at the other views and Toggle back to the mesh as well and adjust the shape of the eye. So looking at my reference, this um, parts closer to the nose sort of drooped down a bit. So just going to do that. Then take it up a little bit. So usually, if I had to use the crease brush from the uh, from the original mesh, um, I have to do a lot of masking and you know back and forth. So sometimes I just I I, I prefer to do it this way. You know, I prefer to do it this way. Add use a separate mesh for the for the eyelids, and then join it later. I think I'll move this. Swear back a bit. Then I'm going to add the upper eyelid. I'm going to add another round cube. It's just the mesh I like to use. Basically, you could manipulate any mesh and uh, you could add a cube. You could use any mesh and you know get get what you want, but just get the one that is easier and closer to the shape that you want. So I'm just using the move brush to shape the bottom eyelid. I'm not too worried about the overall shape. I just want to place it there first. And then as I go, um, we could we could uh, we could refine it. And also the surrounding parts as well. So I just, I end up switching from mesh to mesh, looking at the reference and then I make the switch, looking at the reference I make a switch. Then I'm going to do what I did with the upper eyelid, I'm going to apply the scale and uh, remesh, remesh, yeah. Just so that everything is nice and uh, we have some good amount of uh, polygons just before I begin to use dynamic topology. I don't want to use it just yet. I'm gonna, I'm gonna scrape these areas which is where the eye will sit uh, while I look at reference, so reference is very, it's very important. I can't, I can't overemphasize it. You know, it makes a huge difference in your work and uh, makes stuff easier for you. Okay, um, so I'll just keep adjusting and keep looking at the views, switching the meshes and getting what I want. I'm going to switch to this mesh, the main mesh. And if you look at the face, you know, 
There's some protrusions here. Uh, oh, it's too harsh. Just going to add it. I said I don't want to do too much. Just do as much as as much as needed. Cause we're not working on the face, so I'm trying to keep it simple. And keep the tutorial as long as it needs to be. Not nothing more, nothing less. So you know, just above this area is where I'd add the uh, the brows. Once you're fairly happy with the shape, we could go ahead and join it. That's what I'm going to. Do. That's what I'm going to do now. Quite happy with the shape of the eye. I'm going to join it so I could um, smoothen out the rough edges. So I have the bow tool enabled. Just select and select the mesh last, and uh, just hit union. And then I can go back and begin to work on the edges. I haven't turned on dynamic topology yet. Just going to smoothen it out first. I'm going to use the crease and just tighten these edges. Then smoothen out these areas. So it's 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 just um, involves a lot of back and forth. And then add the little ducts over here. Okay. Okay, I, I think I could turn it on now. Yeah. I'm going to use the crease and get that. Okay, okay. And just begin to work on the transitions between the uh, the mesh or the meshes that we join together using the bow tool. So as I add as I add polygons, I smooth it out and I keep going. Um, right now I'm using the multiplane script using the how do I put it the, uh, the the reverse function so I'm holding down control it it acts like the script but um I tend to like you know the look Sometimes better than the scrape brush. I think I just prefer it. Do I still use the scrape brush in my workflow? So, going back to the multiplane script, and I just hold down control just to begin to polish it a little bit. then back to the crease to tighten up those edges let me look at this as well and also um, smoothen that out oh no i could i could use the multiplane script here so basically from now from this point on it's just a lot of uh uh 
back and forth you know use the grab use the crease lots of adjustments to be done before you get something that you could call uh, uh, um, you know finished but just so you know when you're sculpting an eye it's 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 going to make more sense if if we're working on a face actually but just keep in mind if you're sculpting an eye you have to look at the surrounding areas around the eye and you have to break it down as much as you can what I'm going to do now I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to work on this a, a little bit more and then we could see something that looks quite like uh, a finished or almost finished you know, something something uh, a little bit better a little bit cleaner than what we have now and I'm using the same um, techniques I'm not going to uh, like retopo or do anything like that um, just going over and over and uh, adjusting the shape looking at the reference very important and then I just keep adjusting the shape of the eye until I like what I see and then I could just call it the wrap I could I could just wrap it up there all right so after a couple of minutes I um, as you can see I just uh, made it a, a little bit more um, uh, smooth uh, it's, it's the same tools the same tools uh, the grab brush uh, the crease over here the upper eyelid um, I I did a little bit of masking to just bring out this upper area a bit and uh, you know uh, creasing pinching grabbing uh, adding some uh, bit of flesh or mesh over the upper eyelid and the lower eyelid just getting some things uh, to look a little bit more um, less rough than they were so um, I even uh, brought in some brows uh, lashes actually uh, uh, just to help with the look you know uh, some stylized brows over there yeah, you could do whatever you want you could uh, do some little vertex painting or whatsoever but um, the purpose of this tutorial was just to uh, show you guys how to or how I sculpt the eye and uh, I hope it was helpful you could you, you know you could uh, trim the sides I think I hit T and go to sculpt wood. Let's see. I could use box trim. Uh, okay. Mm, sweet. I just cut my mesh. I'm going to do it for the other sides. Okay, so it's just uh, just to make it a little bit more uh, good looking. Uh, and I could turn on outline and uh, a bit of cavity so uh, we're done if you could take anything from this just remember that uh, you have to work on the area surrounding the eye especially if you're working on your face you know and then work on the upper eyelid the lower eyelid and just keep looking at references and keep adjusting you know it, it, it could always look better and you could always uh, sculpt whatever kind of eye you want, just uh, knowing some basic um, things. So I hope this was helpful. And if it was, I would like you to uh, like and subscribe and tell me what you think of the video. And uh, I also, I'll, I'll be doing other body parts and then uh, I would want to also do uh, a real-time tutorial of us sculpting the face so that is going to come down the line uh, I just want to get this out there first so we could just focus on the features and then have a tutorial where we focus on the face I'll see you guys in the next one thank you for watching and